Welcome to the Revelation of Hope podcast with your host, Alvin Bonds II. Join us each week as Alvin explores the relationship between leadership and families by interviewing leaders in different fields all over the world. Alvin believes that the success of tomorrow's leaders begins with the success of today's families. Hello, and welcome to the Revelation of Hope podcast. I am your host, Alvin Bonds II, and this is episode 13. Today, I interviewed Jeremy Knopf, who is a Marine veteran and CEO of Spartan Media. Before I get to that interview, I'd like to talk just a moment about value added and also about the United States veterans. Looking at value added, and this is something that Jeremy mentions in his interview, what are you doing or what value are you adding to the things that you do? Whether you are a parent, you are a spouse, you are a supervisor, you're a student, you're a teacher, whatever your role, whatever your function, whatever your position is in the world, how are you adding value to the things that you do? It's not good enough to simply exist, but what are you doing to add value? And Jeremy mentions that, and he also talks about honoring the value that people have. If you are in a position of leadership, you are responsible for the people who report to you, whether it is in a business setting, uh, for Jeremy's perspective, from the Marine Corps. You may be a parent. How are you adding value to your family? What value are you adding to your children's lives? So I invite you just to think about that. What value are you adding to whatever it is that you're responsible for? Whatever it is you're involved in, how are you adding value to it? And there's lots of ways you can do that. I also want to give honor to the United States veterans, anyone that has served in any branch of our armed services, I honor you today. And that's something that you'll discover in the interview. But Jeremy is the CEO of Spartan Media. You can look him up at his website at SpartanMedia.com. And one of the interesting things about Jeremy's company is that he himself is a veteran and almost 100% of the individuals that work at his agency are veterans. That is something that is near and dear to Jeremy's heart and he makes a point to invest in our veterans. And I think that's tremendous and I think that's an amazing task that Jeremy has taken on and is needed. Jeremy discusses how he understands how veterans think because he is a veteran. He understands the drive that veterans have. And so he uses that to create a safe place for veterans to allow them to flourish in the areas that they flourish. Jeremy's company, Spartan Media, specializes in digital marketing. They focus on web design, search engine optimization, social marketing, and much more. In addition to Spartan Media, Jeremy is also a contributor at Search Engine Journal, as well as Search Engine Land. Jeremy has also been featured in articles in Forbes, as well as the Huffington Post. Jeremy has been featured in many articles this year. One Huffington Post article posted February 28th, 2017, titled Veteran Entrepreneurs You Should Know in 2017 by contributor Dwayne D. Powell. Jeremy was listed in that list among several others, entrepreneurs who are veterans that you should look for. Jeremy is also married and has a son and a daughter. So not only does Jeremy have his hands full at work, he also has both hands full at home with his family. I am thankful for Jeremy allowing me to interview him for this podcast. And thank you, Jeremy, and welcome to the podcast. Tell us what you do. So I run a digital marketing agency down here in Tampa, and uh, 
in a nutshell, we do web design, search engine optimization, uh, social media, basically any kind of digital marketing. And from what I understand, your agency is staffed 100% with U.S. military veterans? Uh, close to 100, but not, in, not entirely 100%. Okay. But we're definitely looking to hire several more uh, throughout the next couple of years as well. Okay. And, and you yourself are a veteran. What makes this so important to you to have veterans employed in your agency? So there's actually a couple of reasons for that. The first is, obviously, I, I have a, a certain affinity for veterans. I know, um, like I know how we think, how we operate. Um, I definitely want to create an environment where they can transition out of the military and into civilian life um, in, a, in an environment that they're comfortable with. You know, they're a very different breed of people. We take initiative a lot. Um, we're very aggressive. Uh, we tend not to be very politically correct at times. Sure. Uh, that, that kind of uh, doesn't go over so well in a lot of traditional companies. Veterans are typically very hardworking people. Uh, they don't have a problem with jumping into problems and just tackling it with both hands and doing whatever needs to be done. That's one of the big differences you'll see between civilians and veterans is a veteran is going to do whatever it takes to get the job done, right? If civilian walks into a room and they go, oh, well, hey, the door's locked. I can't do this task over here. Well, the veteran's going to pop open a ceiling tile and climb through the damn ceiling and hop down the other side. Like, we're going to find a way. It doesn't yeah. matter what. There's no such thing as excuses in our world. Where does that, that type of, of work ethic come from? Is it innate or is it something that's taught? I believe it's a combination of things. So I think you you naturally have that in your in your character if you're the type of person who's going to go into the military. So to some degree, it's already a part of who you are. But then as you, as you work your way through the military, it gets hammered into you in a variety of ways. You know, okay. say you're out on a patrol, you need to keep yourself awake no matter what so that everybody stays together, everybody accomplishes the mission on time without getting lost or hurt or killed or anything like that. So you know that the guy to the left or right of you is depending on you. It's not just a job, it's people's lives here that are at stake. So you really take that up to the next level. That makes perfect sense. And when you look at, at military veterans, like you said, you have a different perspective to, to everything. Uh, your company is called Spartan Media. Tell us how you came up with that name. The name kind of, it signifies a couple of different things. First of all, obviously it's a veteran-owned business. Uh, the Spartans, historically a very powerful, special type of warrior class. The name started off from that perspective, it's veteran-owned, but then also we look at it from the perspective of the people that we work with. We're not just, just want to maybe grow a little bit, let's go pick up a few more clients here and there. The kind of people we work with are the people who want to just go in and absolutely dominate their industry. Yeah. So it's a reference to that as well. And then also, as we talked about, you know, it's it's not just me that's a veteran here. It's you know other people within the company are veterans. So we're trying to uh, and we're trying to grow that aspect as well. You know, we want to make this a very large company. And as we grow, I want to keep us somewhere between seventy-five to eighty percent veterans. Yeah. And, and I've, I've listened to and, and uh, some previous interviews that you've done, and this brainchild of yours kind of started a little bit, or you developed it, I guess, while you were serving, and it kind of, you know, blossomed and came to fruition since you've been, you know, civilian. What does leadership look like in your in your agency compared to, I guess, in the military when you serve? Uh, you know, it's actually very similar. I'm a big fan of initiative. I don't want to do a lot of hand holding. I want people to feel empowered to go off and do what they need to do, right? Like, I want my people to operate as sort of smaller, independent units. It makes the company a lot more efficient. It really creates a lot more of ideas and different thinking, right? If I'm the one, if it's all top down thinking and all the ideas are coming from me, I can't possibly know all of the different things that are going on in an industry. Yeah. But if you've got other people and they've got varied interests, maybe somebody's really deep into social somebody else is really deep into search or somebody's huge on video. All of these people are going to have different perspectives. They're going to see things in different ways. They're going to be exposed to different knowledge, different groups of people. So they're going to all come into uh, the company with different ideas and all of those people bring value 
and they have ideas that people at the top they may, maybe don't have. So as you've got all of these different people sort of operating to some degree autonomously, it's going to create a lot more uh, innovation in the company. Mm. You, you talked about recognizing the value in, in each each person. As a leader, that's definitely something that's, regardless of someone's style or leadership or personality, that's something that everyone has. What has informed that type of leadership that you have presently? You know, I think a lot of it does come from when I was in the military. A lot of people have a misconception about the military that it's just a bunch of people barking orders and people just immediately do what was, you know, what was said. And in reality, nothing could be further from the truth. Mm-hmm. Like, even in the military, you have to have tremendous leadership skills or people are just not going to listen to you. You know, they may do the thing while you're standing there, but if you're not standing there, they're going to half-ass it. Yes. Or they're going to take forever to do it. They're not going to finish it. Somebody else is going to have to come in and finish it because they don't want the group as a whole to get in trouble, right? Yeah. So even in the military, you need to be able to motivate people, not just give a command because that's not, that's not going to work. It's not human nature. And that was kind of, I think, a surprise for me that I, I realized fairly early on when I would be two very different styles of leadership. You know, we had, throughout my time in, in the unit that I was in, we had three different captains over a four-year period, which is normal. One of the captains, this guy was, uh, at the time, now he's a, uh, he's a colonel now, but at the time, uh, he was a captain. This was Captain Henderson. This guy, he was just, the epitome of leadership. This guy, if we went out to the field, we're all out there nasty, dirty, hungry, tired, cold, whatever, and he would have to come back to the rear every now and then to take care of some paperwork, some patent and stuff. And occasionally I would come back with him because of some of the jobs that I had. He would sit there back in the company office and he would eat an MRE rather than going to the chapel. He wouldn't take a shower, which a lot of other officers would do, things like that. Like, just the little comfort thing that, that he very easily could have done, but he didn't because he was, you know, just such a great leader. Like, he did the right thing all the time. Yeah. As a result, anybody anybody in the unit would follow this guy straight in the hell. The next captain that we had after that, Captain Tanner, and this guy was basically a polar opposite. You know, we would go out to the field. He would show up hours late show up in his personal vehicle, break out a newspaper and a little camp chair and the radio and TV and the whole nine yards. Um, he would disappear when the weather got bad. This guy would not, you know, people would just not listen to him. Nothing got done. He was just, yeah. everything about the, the company just turned to garbage because of his poor leadership. So that was really eye-opening for me. And that's something that I have carried with me ever since then. And that, that's very interesting that, you know, under Captain, you now Colonel Henderson's leadership, you saw a true leader compared to Tanner. It's it's a different. But what I love is that you've taken that and even to this day, you apply it to your life. How has your leadership developed since then? And I understand that, like you said, as the military, you have an innate sense of, of service and, and leadership, but how do you stay current? How do you grow and develop? It comes down to a lot of things, really. There's Obviously, you're always working to develop yourself professionally. Part of that comes from you know doing the day-to-day things you need to do as a leader, You know, consuming additional information, taking courses, learning things, podcasts. There's, there's a ton of material out there on leadership. And then as you consume that content, you know, you have to go into a real world situation and actually apply it. It doesn't do you any good to listen to things or read things and then never apply them. So once you've compiled that information, then you go out and use it and you kind of look at the results, see how it works, because things are going to work a little bit different for everybody. Mm-hmm. So you look at how it works, look at the outcome, and then maybe look at what could you do differently. What could you do to get a little bit better result? How could you tweak it to your unique style? So these are all of the things that you have to look at and continue to develop. And I understand you are married and you have a son and a daughter. What does leadership look like at home with your family? <laughs> uh, that is an entirely new experience for me. <laughs> um, children are very different. I don't know if you have kids, but uh, 
they're very different than, uh, than adults. Yes. <laughs> um, they're like little people, but they, uh, you know, I, I think there's certain things about them that give them advantages that we don't necessarily have. Like they have a level of persistence huh. that you just don't see in adults. Like if a kid wants a piece of candy, he's going to, you know, try and negotiate. Yes. He's going to cry. He's going to make a scene. He's going to try and, you know, sneak it when you're not looking. Like every possible angle, they're just going to keep going until they jump over that wall. And and that's something that, that I think we can learn from them. But what we can also what we can also do with children is use that as another opportunity to learn leadership. Because honestly, I mean, we're all little children in adult bodies at the end of the day. Yes. You know, we right. still we still operate on emotion, regardless of whether you know we think we operate on logic. But that's just scientifically not true, right? Yes. Like we make a decision based on emotion, and then. Go to go back to it sort of after the fact and look for the the logic behind it to try and support our emotional decision. You are so right, and as a therapist, I see this and deal with this every day, and I spend a lot of time of allowing people to see how their emotions have affected their decisions. It affects their communication. It affects decision making, and a lot of times we're not aware of it. How do you manage your emotions at home with, with your wife, with your children? I think it comes down a lot to communication, right? Yes. Like, if I come into a situation and I'm convinced of whatever's going on is the black and white of the situation, everybody else who's in that situation is going to have a different perspective. Yes. So it, it really all comes down to talking to people, understanding, you know, how they're viewing things, um, explaining how you're viewing things, and then when everybody's on the same page, uh, you know, they can understand who's, you know, what everybody's going through, and you know how to kind of get to the goal that you're trying to get to, and you know, that's on that note. One of the things that I think a lot of people don't do is, you know, I mentioned getting to the goal that you're trying to get to. People don't really identify goals. We do it in business. We do it in maybe our, our personal like exercise goals, things like that, but we don't really do it in our families. Like we don't say, I want us as a family to be this way or do this thing or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's something that people generally, as a rule, don't identify it. You, your background, you probably see a lot more of that. Would you, would you say that's accurate? I do. I definitely agree with that. We, we're, we're just wandering aimlessly and, Whenever I'm starting a therapy session or treatment with someone, we start with, okay, what are the goals? What are you working towards? Otherwise, we're just, people are just throwing money at me and we're not getting anywhere. Yeah. Right. Do your children understand what you do or how do you explain to them your job? So, I, you know, I've actually been getting into that a lot lately with my son. I really want him to as he gets older, kind of get into the entrepreneurial world because it opens up a lot more doors than going out, you know, doing the traditional, go to college, go somewhere, get a job that you hope you're going to work at. So, yeah, I've been working with him a lot lately on this and I really want him to go into the entrepreneurial world because it opens up a lot of doors that, you know, you generally don't have. I think we've essentially killed the whole go to college, go work somewhere for 30 years. Like that, that just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. As an entrepreneur, you can basically define your own life. You can you can build a company to create the lifestyle you want. You know, you can go and work eighty hours a week if you want and just crush it financially. Or you could build a company that doesn't really require you to be involved all that much, so that you can go off and travel and do whatever you want. So it, it gives you a lot of flexibility, and that's where I want my children to kind of understand it and go toward that direction if that's what they want to do. So in his case, what I've been doing is, you know, I bring him to the office a lot when I can. Obviously, he's he's in school at this time, so uh, that's kind of got cut back down the summer's over with. Yeah. But I take him to meetings when I when I can. I take him to networking events. I let him see me standing up in front of large groups of people and speaking and presenting. Um, I let him see me in a leadership role so that he can see how these things work. I let him sit in on meetings so that he can see sort of how negotiations work. Um, you know, I've explained 
in the level of detail that he'll understand sort of what we do and how we help people to do what they want to do, right? So we were actually having a conversation about this last night, and we talked about how you know, we help people to, to get out there and get in front of more people so they can sell more of their products or their services. And, you know, we do it through like search engine optimization and social media and all these things, and we explain how, how what we do helps other people do what they want to do. Um, and then we kind of talked about you know, the financial aspect of how we do this thing, and then it helps them make money, so then they pay us money. And then let's do the things that we want to do as a family. For me personally, you know, as a therapist, I work with with uh, mental illness, but I also work with families and couples. I personally believe that the success of tomorrow's leaders begins with the success of today's families. What do you think about that? Absolutely. I mean, I think we can actually take that a step further and you know, look at it all the way up to the country as a whole. Yes. Um, you know, I don't care what political affiliation you have. I don't think you can say that, you know, we're in a good place as, as a whole, yeah. right? Like, both Democrats, Republicans, they have, nobody nobody likes Congress. Right. They've got, like, uh, what, 6 or 7% approval rating. Yeah. But that's not, that's not indicative of politics being broken. It's indicative of society as a whole being broken because those are the people that we're sending up there. Mm. If families were intact and healthy and, and communicating properly and doing all the things, these people wouldn't even be close to in charge. We have people of, of character up there. And, you know, it all comes down to the family at the end of the day. That, that's powerful. And you are exactly right. And it's something that I reflect on. I have the the privilege of working with, you know, all members of the family from mothers and fathers to the children. And and that's something that I I want to, you know, influence in a positive way. These we're building tomorrow's leaders, you know, politicians, you know, doctors, mathematicians. And it starts with the family And, and family is different for everybody. But you're exactly right. I believe that. And and you talked about goals and, and direction and, and you mentioned you want to hire more more veterans for, for your agency, Spark Media. But tell us what your goal is for your company. What are you looking forward to? What are you working towards? We're, we're back in a growth phase right now. I actually you know, went through some health issues that came pretty damn close to destroying the company. So I'm kind of regrowing from there. Yeah. I want, I don't have a specific monetary goal because that's generally a pretty poor way to, to set goals in terms of the business, right? Like if you're setting if you're setting a goal to say, hey, I want my revenue to be you know, $10 million, right? that doesn't really mean anything. You can generate 10 million, help Enron generated tons of money, but they didn't provide any value to the world. Yeah. So, you know, I don't have a specific monetary goal. What I want to do is I want to, I want to build a place where people can come to work, where they feel like, they're contributing something to an organization that matters. They're contributing something to the world as a whole. They feel empowered to do what they love and get paid doing it. Um, and then, obviously, you know, we want to make this a place for veterans to come and work. Uh, and, and, you know, that's, that's it in a nutshell, really. It's not any financial milestones, per se. It's more a matter of adding value from a variety of perspectives, from from who we hire to what they're giving back to the world. Basically creating, I feel like if we do that, we're, A, we're creating another type of family, so to speak, Mm -hmm. but we're also helping them to make their family stronger. And then as we, you know, do that as a whole throughout the country, we start to fix a lot of the problems that we have. Yes. I see that theme, you know, as I read some of your blog posts, Everything that that you post, it's something to help. It's information to help or to educate or to give a perspective that makes people wonder, Okay, am I doing is what I'm doing most effective in accomplishing my goals? Is there a better way? Is there more information that I need? Am I, you know, hitting that target? And I, I definitely see that, you know, throughout, you know, your your family, throughout your business throughout your life. So I, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Is there any... Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. Is, is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners? The one thing that I'll, that I'll share is something that I 
think I mentioned it in a, an article where I was quoted recently on, I think it was on Forbes. When it comes to, to leadership, there's no such thing as not my fault, right? But what I mean by that is if you're in a leadership role, whether that's you're the head of family, you're the head of a company, or you're a manager at a company, um, you're a person in a church or spiritual organization, whatever it is, if you're a leader, you need to accomplish whatever your goal is no matter what else stands in your way. If whatever you're doing is not working, you need to back up, take a few steps to the right or the left, and try to find a different way to approach the problem. Uh, maybe you have to ask, ask for somebody's help. Maybe you have to uh, learn a new skill. Whatever it is, you need to find the solution to overcome that problem. Because there's no, there's no such thing as saying it's not my fault if you're supposed to be a leader. That's powerful. I, I, I really do support that and believe that that and that goes you know in an agency you know a business a, a family that's that's all around thank you so much for listening to this podcast please be sure to subscribe as well as providing a rating and review every week i will interview a different leader and invite them to share with us their views and perspective on the relationship between leadership and family Be sure to visit my website. It's www.alvinbondsthesecond.com. That's A-L-V-I-N-B-O-N-D-S-I-I.com. Have a great day.